Hey, how you doing, Geometry? Uh, we are going to jump into the next lecture here, 7.3. We're going to be looking at the Pythagorean Theorem. You've already used this a couple of times. Uh, you've just never seen it arranged in this particular way. And so uh, this won't be new concepts to you, but it will be some new ways of applying. All right, let's get started right away. The Pythagorean Theorem lets you determine the ratios of the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. So um, in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So we're going to just arbitrarily call the legs here A and B in the hypothesis. Oh my, hypotenuse. There you go. We're going to call C. So um, if you square the length of A and you square the length of B and you add them together, you get the square of the length of C. So this has been frequently called A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so that is the Pythagorean theorem, um, or the Pythagorean triple. Um, I've never heard of that until I read this slide, but whatever. Um, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's something that you've actually already used when you're looking at the distance formula uh, between uh, two different points in a Cartesian plane, but um, you didn't realize that that's what you're doing. So that is what you're doing. And now we're going to show you why. Let's look at this example real quickly here. Here we have a right triangle. And uh, I've been told that the hypotenuse has a length of 17, that this, we're going to just call this x, and this side is 7 units longer. So this is x plus 7, and I want to know how long are the sides. Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here I have a is called x, so don't get too confused. It's still the length of one of the legs, right? We're going to square this. We're going to add it to the square of x plus 7. We're going to have to foil that to get this correct here. And then the sum of these equals 17. So let's see how much fun we can have here. So x squared plus x plus 7 squared plus 17. You have to foil this out, right? So first outer, inner, last. Um, it becomes x squared. Here's this one. And then x times x is, x split, is another x squared. x times 7 is 7x. And then 7 times x is another 7x, so that makes 14x, and then 7 times 7 is 49. So uh, they didn't show you the foiling here, but you've done foil enough, hopefully, that you followed that. Um, and that equals 17 squared, which is 289. Now we need to combine like terms. I have 2x squared, so I've got the 14x, I've got the 49. And uh, I want this to all equal 0. So um, I'm going to set this equal to 0 here. Uh, by moving the, the 289 over, that becomes negative 240 equals 0. So um, I can now divide the whole thing by 2, and I have x squared plus 7x minus 120 equals 0. And now um, there's two ways of solving this. You can just factor, um, and if you are smart enough to just sit here and stare at this, you can find out that actually 15 times 8 is 120. And 15 and 8 are 7 apart. So if you set one of them as positive and one of them as negative, um, you want the positive one to be uh, the same sign as this term. So uh, 15 is positive and the uh, negative goes with 8 so that the positive times the negative gives you this. If you can mentally factor, then you can mentally factor. If not, you can use the quadratic equation, which you can blow the dust off of in your brain. You did use that last year. Um, anyway, you can factor this one of those two ways and discover that x plus 15 times x minus 8 equals 0. Now, once you have that, we're looking at actual lengths here. So the options are x could be negative 15 or x could be 8. In real world things, you can't have a negative distance. If you're talking about physics, you can have a negative distance because you're looking at displacement and positive is one direction, negative is the other. But in a real physical object, you can't measure something and say, oh, this is negative 15 inches long. That doesn't exist. That's not sensical. So the answer in the real world is 8, that this is 8, and then this would be 15, and then this is 17. Okay? So that would be, uh, the side lengths have to be positive, so x equals 8. Okay? And then x plus 17 would be 15. Let's do another one. We're going to find the height of an equilateral triangle, JKL. I don't have the altitude here. I'm going to have to draw it. And so um, the hypotenuse here is 8. And this is going to be half of the length of this because in an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same, right? 
And we know that an altitude divides an equilateral triangle um, into two equal parts. And so the, the altitude here is also a median, and it, it cuts JL into two halves. So this is also 4. So if this is 8 and this is 4, I can figure out what this is, right? ML is 4. So H, the height of this triangle, squared plus 4 squared equals 8 squared. So that has to be 48, and they'd skip some steps here. This is 16, and this is 64. 64 minus 16 is 48. I wish I had to skip that for you. H squared equals 48, so H is the, is the square root of 48. You can simplify that to 4 radical 3, because 16 times 3 is 48. Um, so the height here would be 4 radical 3. Let's continue looking at the Pythagorean theorem here by looking at its converse. If the sum of two squares of the lengths of two sides of a triangle equals the square of the length of the third side, then the triangle is a right triangle. So if you know it's a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. If you don't know that it's a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to see if the sides work in that relationship. If they do, then you have a right triangle. So it can also be a test to see is this triangle a right triangle. Let's use it another way here. So we're going to determine whether a triangle with side lengths of 7, 12, and 13 are, is a right, acute, or an obtuse triangle. The first thing we want to do is see, is this even a triangle, right? Um, 7 plus 12, the two smaller numbers do add up to the greater than the bigger numbers. So 7 plus 12 is 19. It's bigger than 13. So the sides will make a triangle. Is it a right triangle? Well, let's try and see what we can do here. So... Um, if the larger side is c squared, um, then uh, does the do these two smaller sides add up to it if you square them all? Let's put this in an interesting way. c equals the square root of 49 plus 144, so that equals 13.9. Um, and so this actually was a typo. That should have been 12. That should have been 12. Uh, 49 plus 144 is the square of 12. It equals 13.9. Um, it's close to 13, but it is not 13. 13 is less than 13.9. So the triangle is acute. Um, it is, if it were a right triangle, then the hypotenuse would have to be 13.9. The hypotenuse is smaller, which means that the angle has squeezed in, and so it's not a right triangle, right? It's like an acute triangle. We'll do a couple more examples like that in class in your, in your classwork. So this is the corollary that we just demonstrated. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then it's an acute triangle. If a squared plus b squared is more than c squared, then it is, in fact, an obtuse triangle. So this corollary just puts down on paper um, what we just demonstrated in that last example. And that's it. You'll be getting very friendly with your square and square root buttons on your calculators tomorrow as we go through this assignment. Be sure that you bring something that you can use that with in class because otherwise you'll go nuts trying to do this with paper and pencil. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comments field below and I'll get to them as quickly as I can or I will see you in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you and so do I. Good night.